Hey homies, what's good? It's the Tominator. So I'm sure a bunch of you have probably been wondering why I don't upload more often. I see requests all the time that I should make more videos and it would help grow the channel and yada yada yada. Well, I'm going to level with you guys. Part of the reason is that sometimes I just don't feel up to doing the recording. Like, I had the script for this one ready to go a couple days ago, but it just felt like crap. I wasn't sleeping great. So that's usually been the bottleneck lately. Doing these voiceovers and, you know, actually speaking is the part about this whole YouTube thing that I dislike the most. I'm not a natural born speaker. I actually hate public speaking with a passion, believe it or not. I'm much more of an introverted writer type, so if I could get away with writing blog posts or something, I definitely would, but that's not really viable anymore in this age of video. So yeah, I find uh, I really got to get into the right energy state or the right frame of mind in order to speak to you like this, and lately that's been pretty tough working full time and having the gym shut down for what, like over five months now up here in Canada? We've been locked down basically since late October. It's effing brutal, man. Not to mention that it is the off-season in bodybuilding, right? Normally, we'd be in the midst of the Arnold Classic here in March, but with the pandemic situation, everything's been pushed back, and frankly, bodybuilding just isn't my main concern these days, and hasn't been for a while. But anyway, I don't want to get into a whole thing here. Just wanted to let you know why my output is even less than usual lately. Alright, but on to the video. As the title says, we're talking about the 1997 Finland Grand Prix. Now, okay, maybe it wasn't a major contest like the Olympia or the Arnold, but this lineup was so deep, man, I'm telling you. You had Kevin Lavroni, Chris Cormier, Ronnie Coleman, Nasser El Sambadi, Paul Dillette, Vince Taylor, Marco Savalainen, Milo Sarchev, and Lee Priest. In order, by the way. How's that for a top nine? This depth of talent is probably better than the average Arnold Classic nowadays. Not hating, just saying. We've got a bunch of comparisons to go through, so let's check it out. Alright, so this first callout featured Nasser, Kevin, and Paul Dillette from left to right, respectively. And one of my only complaints is the way the other competitors are standing directly behind them. The stage probably wasn't big enough for them to go anywhere else, but it's still very distracting. Anyway, in this front double biceps, I'm going with Nasser. It was an elite pose for him at the time. He had huge biceps, shoulders, and chest with a great taper and probably the best legs in the show, at least from the front. No one's touching those calves and the quads are pretty strong also. After that, I'm going with Lavroni over Dillette. Even though Paul is bigger with better biceps, Kevin's showing better definition overall, uh, especially through the thighs and torso he was definitely in better condition. Okay, so we don't get a good look at this lat spread, but going from memory, I know both Kevin and Nasser were pretty good in this shot. Very wide across the shoulders with excellent lat flare, but I suspect Nasser's better lower body would give him the advantage here. In the side chest, I like Kevin. He may be a little smaller, but he's the most polished from head to toe. He's got the sharpest glute ham tie-in and the most upper body detail. Just look at those razor-like obliques. Nasser doesn't look quite as good here as I remember him being. You can tell he's holding a bit of water because the separation between the arms and delts and glutes and hams is a bit fuzzy. In terms of proportions, his shoulders are sort of overpowering the chest. I still think he looks great, don't get me wrong. I'm just trying to explain why I put Kevin ahead here. And it's tough to decide actually between him and Dillette because Paul is, is showing more, uh, perhaps a bit more detail downstairs now and he's striking the pose in the more traditional fashion with the chest propped up. Nasser's sort of doing the modern day way where it's like a twisting most muscular. Not that I'm opposed to that technique, it's just that Dillette's chest looks a little better here or at least it's more proportionate with the shoulders. Even so, I'd probably still have Nasser in second. Turning around, this is where the big men really falter. Dillette was never good at hitting his back poses, and El Sambadi was holding a lot of water. Kevin Lavroni's easily winning the conditioning contest. He's the only one with peeled glutes and a dried out back. It's too bad for Nasser because he was so competitive up till this point, but he really dropped the ball here. 
As for Dillette, the guy's completely botching it. He's shrugging the shoulders and retracting the scapula, which doesn't allow the lats to open up properly, and his width goes straight out the window. Yeah, he gains a bit of thickness and detail in the upper back doing it this way, but it's an awful trade-off when you lose any semblance of lat development in doing so. I can't believe no one ever helped him fix his execution on this one, because I've yet to see a single show where he looked effective in the back double biceps. The rear lat spread is also going to Kevin, best conditioning, but also the best taper. Nasser might be a little wider, it's hard to tell, but his waist was also wider, so Lavroni's lats look more pronounced. Dillette once again is fairly ineffectual, and both of them pale in comparison to Kevin's conditioning. For what it's worth though, I'd have Nasser in second for both the back poses. Okay, and the side try has to go to Kevin. Just picture-perfect execution. The massive, meaty triceps and delt, the sunken midsection, that nice split down the outer thigh. The proportions and aesthetics are just crazy on him here. Nasser looks good going body part for body part, but his posture is poor. Notice the way he's hunching forward like that. It makes his delt and traps look worse, and his chest also appears scrunched. The whole pose looks sort of forced, like he's struggling to hold it, and he probably was. Mass monsters of his size often have a hard time maintaining flexibility. Now the abs and thighs should be a good one since they all had awesome midsections. Yeah, this goes to Kevin too. Nasser's abs look a bit faded, and Dillette's conditioning once again can't quite match Lavroni's. Although when they do this slightly angled version right at the end, I think Dillette pulls ahead now. His leading leg is definitely killing Lavroni's here. And speaking of legs, check out that honking calf on Nasser, man. Holy cow, he looks phenomenal from the waist down. Unfortunately, those abs, as I mentioned, weren't as separated uh, as they usually were, so I don't think you can give him the pose. In fact, I'd say his upper body is the worst of the three, so I'd probably have to put him in third, as painful as that decision may be because this would crush the average call-out line today, but the abs back then were simply at a higher standard. Alright, so it immediately cuts to our second call-out, since the most muscular wasn't required back then. This time, we've got Chris Cormier in the yellow trunks, and Ronnie Coleman wearing turquoise. Okay, and in the front double, Kevin's getting pushed hard. I mean, he lost to Nasser earlier, and it was never like this was his strongest pose to begin with but one could argue he's losing to both Chris and Ronnie here. One thing's for sure, Coleman's definitely winning in the biceps department. But other than that, I'm not crazy about him here. The torso looks kind of short, and even the legs weren't anything special at this point. I think Cormier wins this. He's got a similar level of polish to Kevin, but with slightly bigger biceps, a broader chest, and thicker quads. His arms also look more symmetrical. Kevin's right arm is noticeably bigger than the left one. The lat spread goes to Kevin. Cormier looks amazing everywhere except the lats themselves, which aren't filling out the shot very well. Kevin's in contrast are much wider. Ronnie looks super thick through the upper body with that dense chest and enormous lats, but the pose doesn't work for a couple reasons. One is that his shoulders are too narrow for those long arms and they lack cap. Another is that he's standing with his legs squished together like that. It looks ridiculous and very incongruent with that massive upper body. I'd have to relegate Coleman to third here simply for bad posing technique. And it's okay guys, we all know he'd come to dominate this pose within a year or two, so don't feel too sorry for him now. In the side chest, Kevin's got his work cut out for him this time. It's shocking to say, but he's arguably coming in last here. Ronnie is simply too big, with easily the best pecs, biceps, and hamstrings in the shot. Yeah, his conditioning isn't quite up to par in the lower body, but it's close enough that all that extra mass puts him ahead. Chris Cormier is also thicker and more muscular than Kevin. The legs and pecs both look fuller. If you want to give this pose to Lavroni, it would have to be on the basis of conditioning and detail, since his chest is the most striated and he's still got the leanest lower body but he's just giving up so much size, I don't think you can award it to him. No doubt it would look a lot different in person or with true HD footage, but based on this look, I'd go with Ronnie in the side chest. 
After that, it's a toss-up between Chris and Kevin. Turning around, something tells me that these next two poses won't be a walk in the park for Kevin either. Yeah, the back double bye goes to Ronnie. That back is just too wide and thick, and the soaring biceps put him over the top. His glutes and hamstrings were barely a microcosm of what they'd become, but already, this is good enough to get the job done. Laveroni is still edging out Cormier here, though, surprisingly. Chris's back doesn't look as thick as I thought it would, and his glutes and hamstrings were notoriously soft. He struggled in, the, in those areas, just like his pal Flex Wheeler, and that drops him down to third here. And oh my god, looks like Christmas came early because they're breaking out the X mysteries. This is a crazy shot. Awesome lower back conditioning on all three of them here. And when they spread those wings, shockingly Kevin remains on top. Considering how much he just excelled in the back double, Ronnie disappoints me here. His back looks sort of smooth and not as wide as you'd expect. Due to his posing execution and perhaps the off angle, it doesn't even look symmetrical either. Cormier looks good through the back, but Kevin's still wider and his traps are way thicker. Plus he retains the lower body advantage, so this is a staggeringly easy win for him here. On paper, he should have lost this because Coleman and Cormier both have better backs, but let's just give it up for the Maryland Muscle Machine because he nailed it. Okay, so this side triceps is a joke and impossible to judge because they don't even really hold it for more than a split second. At least Lavroni doesn't. It's just a bunch of spinning around, flashing the tricep. In my opinion, this sort of thing shouldn't be allowed. I mean, how the hell are you even supposed to judge this? These aren't really poses, they're transitions. But for what it's worth, I'd still probably have to give it to Kevin since neither of these guys knocked it out of the park as much as he did in the previous round. Cormier would be second, and Coleman third. In the ab and thigh, look at those quads on Cormier, the best in the whole show I'd wager. And his midsection was really solid too. I think he probably takes this, although it is very close between him and Kevin. Ronnie is a distant third. Alright, and our last callout features Paul Dillette and Ronnie Coleman once again, but this time Marco Savalainen is in the middle. So this dude was Finnish and must have been like the hometown hero since the contest was held in Finland. Uh, he seemed to receive the loudest cheering, but it's tough to tell if this was simply because his nationality or because of how mind-blowing he looked right here in this front double biceps. I mean, he's flat out winning the shot, guys. Those biceps are so huge, they look shocked. And that waist is super trim in comparison to those lats and quad flare. Talk about an X-frame. I'm actually blown away right now by how good this relative no-name looks compared to two of the biggest 90s legends. Ronnie is second though, and I have to say I think he looks a little better now than he did in the previous round. All that posing probably helped to harden him up because I'm seeing more definition now. The front lat spread also goes to Marco. See, Ronnie needs to take a stance like that. It looks much better and more natural that for a big man to take a wider stance. Ronnie looks like he's practicing to be a ballerina or something with that dainty foot position. It just doesn't work. Dillette is last though because his lats don't flare out very well and his whole upper body just frankly sucks in this pose. It looks like he's not even flexing properly. Maybe he was getting winded up there. I've heard that he suffered from asthma, so that affected his posing too. Savalainen still fares pretty well in the side chest, but he's not dominating it like the front poses. I'd probably go with Coleman here, even though Marco's conditioning is better, because Ronnie was just too thick upstairs, and he crushes him in the chest. One thing I noticed, though, is that he's not showcasing his hamstrings properly. In the last round, they showed some pretty good sweep, but here he's not pressing them into his other leg, and they've flattened out like a pancake. That's a bit of a mistake there. The back double. Now, this is where the rubber meets the road because if Marco can pull off the upset here, he can beat the king at his own game. Granted, this was before Ronnie became an unstoppable juggernaut, but even so, you know what? I think Marco does it. Ronnie's back is still genetically better, but because he was more dialed in, Marco's is showing more detail. 
He also completely neutralizes Ronnie's amazing biceps with his own incredible peaks, and his arms are more separated. This is super close, but yes, I would give the nod to Savalainen here in the back double. It's truly unbelievable that he only placed 7th. I can't in any way, shape, or form see how Paul Delette managed to beat him. And even though we didn't get to see him, I can't imagine an aging Vince Taylor would have surpassed this either. So at a bare minimum then, Marco should have been 5th. I probably would have had him in the top three, so that's just crap judging. Moving on though, he also arguably takes the back lat spread. I'm going to concede it's arguable because Ronnie shows flashes here where he looks like the winner, and I don't like the way Savalainen finishes the pose leaning forward like that, but overall, I think he had enough width and thickness to take out this young version of Ronnie. The side tricep is tough to call because there's only a brief moment where they're both hitting it more or less head on. As with pretty much every other pose, Paul Dillette is third here since his conditioning and posing weren't up to par. But between these two on the right, I'd probably go with Marco once again. This is a really good side tricep for Ronnie since his midsection was tight and his tricep is showing all kinds of striations. But Marco has the more favorable muscle bellies in the triceps and he's presenting his lower body in a much better fashion. And finally, the abs and thigh also goes to Marco. Best combo of abdominals and quads between the three of them. I'm not super keen on how he keeps moving around. I prefer it when guys just hold the pose for a couple of seconds so we can actually see and evaluate it properly. Plus, it looks more confident when they do that. But regardless, I don't see how he loses this. Dillette looks great here too. This was easily his strongest pose at this contest, but he doesn't have the same deep cuts through the thighs. So yeah guys, that's going to do it for this one. I wish we had another call-out comparison with Vince Taylor, Milos, and Lee Priest, but unfortunately they didn't show that. There was one with Lee, but he was standing in between two guys I've never seen before and who frankly didn't look that impressive. Priest himself was off, and so I totally get why he placed so low. You can see from the back how smooth he was. This was more like guest posing shape, to be honest. To be fair, though, I believe all these European Grand Prix back then took place shortly after the Olympia, so many guys probably didn't really care that much and had already peaked earlier. Most of them were probably just coasting into these shows for an easy paycheck. But anyway, the story of the day was undoubtedly the Finnish sensation Marco Savalainen. After looking back at this footage, I cannot fathom how he only took 7th. Never mind getting overlooked, this was an utter screw job. That said, I would maintain that Lavroni was the most well-rounded bodybuilder overall, since he was the best conditioned and didn't have a single weak pose. This was quite possibly the best Kevin Lavroni to ever step foot on stage, so I have zero problem with him walking away with the win. But Savalainen should have been challenging for the title in that top 3 or 4. All right, thanks for watching everyone and stay tuned for next time where I've got more 90s goodness on the way. I'm thinking of covering the 98 or 99 Olympia, maybe both at once actually, so be on the lookout for that. In the meantime, don't forget to like and subscribe for more, and until then, it's the Tominator signing out, and I'll be back.